Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. So, today we are gonna see, what if Naruto Kid Naruto was more powerful Kai Ubi, part 1, subscribe if you enjoy the video, and also check the description, so let's begin the story. Please, I come to you on bent knees to beg for your aid. The six-year-old blonde hair boy said as he knelt on the hard stone floor of the chamber. I humbly beg you to teach me and help me become stronger, so I can make my dream come true. Dottie paused, I know that you don't like me, nobody does, but please consider my request. Seeing that he would receive no answer the little boy stood and turned away. I guess I shouldn't have expected anything from you, it's not like you care. You're right about that, I don't. But I am curious, what's your dream, and don't tell me it's to be Hokage. Came a voice from the darkness. The blonde turned around and looked straight into the terrifying red eyes of his potential teacher. I will find others like me and bring them together away from the hatred and prejudice of those fools who fear us he said with an almost maniacal grin on his face. Is that so, and how are you going to find everyone like yourself and get them away from those who control them? They aren't likely to let their strongest weapons be stolen just like that. That's why I will get strong and beat up anyone who tries to stop me Dottie answered with a shrug. The great beast laughed uproariously at the simple answer. What are you laughing at asked the blonde in an offended voice. You have a spunk kit, I like that dot the massive demon looked down at the small child on the other side of the giant cage door. I will train you and help you get power if you can pass my test. What you want me to do was the exited response, take this scroll and study it, if you can master the technique in one month's time I will accept you as my student and partner. As he spoke a menacing red fog flowed out of the cage and formed a scroll in the boy's hands. Thank you sensei the boy smiled brightly and faded away. I wonder if he can actually do it said the Kaiubi with a quiet chuckle. After leaving his mindscape Naruto looked around, he was in his dingy apartment with its peeling wallpaper and worn furniture provided by the Hokage. As Naruto thought about it, he realized that the Hokage was the only reason he was still in this town, he was the only one who had been kind to Naruto in the past. Looking down at the scroll in his hands Naruto nearly fainted. He expects me to master this in one month he nearly yelled. In his hands was one of the most advanced techniques he had ever read, which wasn't saying much. An Itsumoni. Ogre Demon Tsum. Claw Talon, he read. This might be harder than I thought. And so Naruto trained in secret in the deepest parts of the forest, at empty training grounds, and at school under his desk. Soon a month had passed, and the young ninja wannabe was ready, or as ready as anyone can be to stare into the face of a giant fox demon that can decimate a small town with an effort of will. The meeting went well, he proved that he could use basic chakra attacks, even with just his own chakra, and now it was time to learn how to harness the power of the demon. There he goes, that little monster. Stupid demon. I am so glad my children know not to go near that trash. I hope he gets what's coming to him. He should just die. These whispers followed Naruto as he walked towards the academy. The villagers had always hated him and for a long time they had often attacked him and angry mobs, until on his 10th birthday, he executed a perfect Kawarimi body replacement to switch with a log covered with explosive notes. Needless to say the citizens stopped trying to attack him. Most of what was said behind his back was in a quiet whisper and not meant to be heard by him, but he could easily hear what was said thanks to his greatly improved senses, a gift from Kaiubi no Kitsune. Naruto guessed that they thought that such things would anger him, but he found that he really didn't care. These people were simply fools who couldn't let sleeping demons lie pardon the pun and were of no interest to the young dot. Soon he found his way to the ninja academy. Around the entrance he could see a number of children awaiting the start of classes, and a short distance away he could see Ichiha Sasuke and his customary swarm of crazed fangirls. This is how it had been for years. Naruto spent most of his time ignoring the teachers and training in secret while everyone was asleep. He had started pranking when he was little to get attention. Now he did it to practice tactical thinking, he never showed his actual abilities to the teachers or students and did his best to look like a harmless and ineffective ninja. He still wore the old orange jumpsuit, even though he had already taken the liberty of buying some other clothing while under a hinge, so the shopkeeper wouldn't recognize him. Finally class started and Naruto took his seat near the back of the room in the corner and out of the way, he wasn't sure why he bothered when everyone who wanted to notice him still did. As Ruka sensei came in and started today's lecture about keeping your kunai sharp or something to that effect, Naruto drifted off and started looking around the room. There was Akamichi Choji eating his snacks beside his best friend Shakamarinara the lazy genius. There not far from them sat Aburam Shino, who appeared to be staring at a small beetle, and Inuzuka Kiba, who was asleep next to him sat Hayuga Hinata, the surprisingly shy heiress of the most prestigious clan and Dot and finally in the far end of the room sat Yamanaka Ino and Haruno Sakura who were fighting over Sasuke, no surprise there. Now class as you know your final genin exam is coming up, so to prepare you for the test I have taken the liberty of preparing a pop quiz. Dot Aruka sensei's announcement was met with a large amount of moaning. The test was easy, but Naruto wrote down the wrong answer for 49 of the questions. 
He wouldn't want the teachers to realize that his stupidity was just a hoax. In fact, knowing that the teachers, except were mostly trying to make him fail by ridiculing his questions and refusing to help him actually learn anything, Naruto had long ago gotten into the habit of downplaying his accomplishments so that he just barely passed anything. Then came the final exam. Naruto accepted his written exam and answered the questions, then suddenly he stopped. It was too easy, a five-year-old could answer it right. Looking around Naruto noticed a slight discoloration on the wall, a hidden watcher. Making certain to keep his motion subtle, Naruto made a hand sign and released the dot this is more like it he thought, just for that I'll answer it all right. After the written exam was over he secretly watched Mizuki sensei stare in shock at his test. The next tests consisted of Tejutsu where he fraud against Sakura and punched her in the gut, once causing the physically weak Kinoichi to collapse. He then had to move on to Ninjutsu and Dot. When finally asked to create a, Naruto mentally kicked himself. Damn it, Fox. I stink at this he mentally screamed, it's your own fault kid, you should have worked harder on your chakra control. Naruto sighed and hopped for the best. Concentrating on the technique, he pushed a minuscule amount of his massive chakra into the clone. Just as he did, he could already feel the overload the clone would have, thinking fast he shifted the technique. There was a puff of smoke, a loud bang, and suddenly there were six Naruto's. All of them looked quite shaken. Naruto, the assignment was one clone not five dot stated Aruka dryly, though I am impressed that you take this so seriously, there is no need to overwork yourself. Sorry sensei, I guess I need to work on limiting my chakra better. Wait, are you saying this happened because you accidentally put too much chakra into the technique Mizuki practically shouted. I tried to limit it. It's pretty hard though. Mizuki looked like he would faint. Hiruka stared at Naruto with eyes the size of dinner plates, and everyone else just sweat dropped. There was one thought on everyone's mind, just how much chakra does he have? Needless to say, Naruto passed on the condition that he work on his chakra control. Naruto knew something was wrong, Mizuki was acting strange. There was a nervous quality about him that marked him as being on edge. Naruto could literally smell his fear. As he walked out of the building after the exam, Naruto could tell he was being watched, more so than usual. He silently debated with himself whether or not to acknowledge that he was aware of the spy. Finally he decided. What do you want Mizuki-sensei he asked. Mizuki tripped and fell out of the tree he was hiding in. Well, you really are full of surprises today Naruto-kun. A master of stealth, you are not. Um ah well yes, you see this was just another test, to see how good your detection skills were. Naruto sweat dropped. Did this clown really think that he was going to convince him with such a lame story? Well, two can play at that game. Oh, I guess that makes sense, so is that it or are there any more tests Naruto said adopting his most ignorant persona, the one he'd been using in class for years. There is one more left, Naruto, this one isn't available to all students. It's a secret test to see if you are good enough to be an elite. Mizuki said, clearly trying to trick Naruto into doing something that he wasn't supposed to do. Deciding to play along, Naruto asked, so what do I have to do? Mizuki could hardly believe his luck, not only was the kid falling for it, but he was actually good enough that he might even succeed in getting the scroll. Naruto arrived at the meeting place before the alarm even sounded. He sat down and looked speculatively over at the scroll. I wonder what the big deal is. Well, I might as well check and see why Mizuki wanted this thing so badly. He opened the scroll carefully to not set off any traps. Naruto nearly whooped with joy. Hey Fox this may be the solution to my Bushin problem. Good work kid, but if we've already gotten this far, let's just memorize a couple of techniques before anyone shows up. You can work on mastering them when we have more time. Dot was an exciting answer. Naruto quickly read several other techniques, and he knew that the fox was recording them for later training. After getting through the first few techniques, Naruto stopped and rolled the scroll back up. He then started practicing some techniques until Mizuki arrived. Surprisingly, the first person to arrive was not Mizuki, but Aruka sensei and Mizuki soon followed. Hey there Naruto, so good of you to get my scroll for me. Mizuki laughed, what? So you're responsible for this? Naruto, don't let him get the scroll yelled Aruka. Don't listen to Naruto, he can't be trusted, he's been keeping secrets from you. He hates you. Mizuki called. No Mizuki don't scream Aruka, there was a law passed 12 years ago. A law about you, no one is supposed to tell you. Don't Mizuki, it's forbidden. You are the demon fox Mizuki yelled, you are a loathsome monster who everyone hates. I know Dot said Naruto calmly. The two ninja just looked at him shocked. Suddenly he was behind Mizuki, however I feel it is my duty to correct you this once, I am not Kaiubi no Kitsune, I am his jailer Dot he said without the slightest bit of emotion. 
Then he spun around, Charka forming claws around his hands, and sliced Mizuki's head. Then he lifted the scroll off his back and handed it to Aruka. We should return to the Hokage's tower, the old man is waiting for us. Dadi said calmly, as though nothing had happened, and his left hand wasn't splashed in blood. The Hokage sat in his office with Naruto and Aruka, looking at the note he had found in his hat after the robbery. Dear, Oyaji, I have taken the forbidden scroll in order to reveal a traitor in our midst. I know that the council won't listen to me unless I have undeniable proof, so that's what I'll get. Naruto, it has come to my attention that you have been keeping some major secrets regarding your actual abilities. The aging Hokage started between puffs of his pipe. When everyone around you has your worst interests at heart, it is unwise to draw attention to yourself. Answered the blonde genin. From what I understand, you are aware of the demon's presence and are not concerned about it. Suratobi puffed, that's right. May I ask about what happened? I won't stop you, will you answer? The boy nodded. Then please tell me. And so Naruto wove his tale of sadness, abuse, fear and his discovery of the fox, one day after being run over accidentally by a fruit cart. He proceeded to tell about his training and school years and up to events of tonight. He specifically spoke in a way so as to avoid revealing the full extent of his skill and power, but both the Hokage and the academy teacher classified him as easily a chunin. Finally the story was finished, and all three sat back to think over the facts. May I make a request Hokage-sama asked Naruto. I feel it is my right to know about my origins. The third smiled slightly, he had anticipated this. As I suspect you have realized your father was Namika's Minato, the fourth Hokage. The boy nodded. Your father asked that you not take his name and conceal this information to protect you from his many foes. Your mother was from the land of whirlpools her name was Yuzumaki Kashina, you were given her name, I'm sorry, but there isn't much more I can tell you about her, she was a tomboy and had red hair, she was quite beautiful, you remind me quite a bit of her. Your father left you some scrolls with some of his signature techniques, but you are not yet ready to learn them. They require perfect chakra control and lots of experience to use. Said the elderly village leader, they shall be given to you when you are deemed ready. I thought as much admitted Naruto. Now that I'm out of the academy, I have no reason to hold back my power, or for that matter wear this ridiculous jumpsuit. He added looking with distaste at the eyesore. Naruto stood up. I also don't really care how many people know of my condition as a demon container. I must go and rest for tomorrow when I meet my instructor. As Naruto started towards the door, he was stopped by a question from the Hokage. Tell me now, Naruto, are you still that little boy who dreams of being Hokage? That little boy grew up the young Jinchuriki answered as he kept going. Then just before leaving the room he turned back and said, but that's the thing about dreams, they don't die that easily. Having said that, the demon container left behind the two older shinobi. As he walked down the street, Naruto noticed something different about the looks he was receiving. Maybe they had heard about the Mizuki incident. Or maybe it had something to do with a large cardboard box that was following him around. He stopped, right there in the middle of the street. He then yawned loudly and stretched. Then he jumped onto the roof and ran over the roofs towards the academy. No way am I gonna let someone with such a lame disguise chase me around. He jumped the last hundred meters and landed right outside the academy doors, barely sweating. Then walked towards the classroom and stopped outside the door. The young ninja focused chakra into his senses and soon identified who was inside. He could hear the crunching of chips and the buzzing of insects. And he could clearly smell the offensive odor of the perfume worn by Sasuke's fangirls. Who spread that lame rumor that Sasuke liked the smell of red roses? The smell was strong enough to make him want to sneeze. The classroom was filled with chatter, everyone had heard about the previous night's events. Azuki had tried to turn traitor and was killed. However, the most shocking part was that the one who had killed him was rumored to be Uzumaki Naruto. No one could believe it, the class's supposed dead son had killed a chunin. And not only that but with only one hit. Upon hearing the news, the last Achiha had actually stopped brooding for a moment and developed a homicidal look on his face. His fangirls all ooed and awed about how dangerous he looked. Then the room was silenced by an unexpected sound. A very odd sight met the assembled genin's eyes. A young man that had blonde spiky hair tumbled into the room. He had blue eyes and Naruto's trademark whisker marks but that's the only thing they recognized. He wore dark green cargo pants and a black shirt with its leaves ripped off, and he carried a short sword at his left side. His eight was wrapped around his left bicep. The thing that most attracted their attention was the aura of competence and strength that surrounded him, even as he sneezed violently. Gone was the silly grin, and gone too was the hideous orange jumpsuit. In the corner, a small girl with dark blue hair and pale pupil-less eyes gasped softly and grew very, very red. Naruto Kanshi whispered under her breath. She was developing some kind of strange feeling deep down inside her. Naruto stiffened for barely a moment. There was a smell in here that was different from usual, yet familiar. He couldn't quite place it, it resembled a smell that sometimes could be felt from Sasuke's fangirls when they didn't wear that vile perfume. 
That was odd, especially since he couldn't smell it a moment ago. He briefly considered walking over and saying hi to Hinata, as he had heard her voice a moment ago, but he decided against it. It wasn't the right time for that. Maybe later. He quickly went to his seat and sat down, moments before Iruka-sensei entered the room. Alright class you will now be placed on teams based on your scores and skills. Now team 1 will be he began team 7 will be Ichiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Yuzumaki Naruto. Then thought what the hell are those morons thinking. That's the stupidest balance I have ever seen on any given team. As expected Sasuke brooded and Sakura jumped about happily. The shocking thing was the reaction of Yuzumaki Naruto. He looked at Sakura up and down, and then scowled. Then after studying the now stunned Kanoichi, he shifted his gaze to Sasuke and sighed in an exasperated fashion. Finally Naruto stood up and walked out of the room. Everyone thought that Aruka-sensei would chase after him and drag him back. Strangely he did not do so. That was odd, maybe those rumors were true, and Naruto had killed Mizuki. Was Aruka scared of him? Soon after the class was allowed to leave for a short break before meeting their Jonin sensei All the teams were picked up by their instructors with the exception of Team 7, actually neither had a Kakashi nor Naruto were in the room. Sasuke was brooding again, and Sakura was walking around the room yelling about untrustworthy teammates and late teachers. Then the door slid open. In the doorway stood a man in standard ninja clothing, blue pants and shirt, with kunai holsters and utility pouches. He also wore a mask over the bottom part of his face. He also wore a green vest that identified him as a jonin. The O stated the ninja. Oh, I guess I have the wrong room. I was looking for my team. Are you had a Kakashi asked a disgruntled Sakura. Hi, then we are your team she practically screamed. So where's the third brat? I'm up here. All three looked up to see Naruto standing on the ceiling. Two jaws hit the ground while Kakashi just looked at the blonde boy. He may be better than I heard. He thought. Why are you on the ceiling? Why are you lady countered? I was walking on the road of life when I saw the latest of the series. Naruto cut in. Well let's meet on the roof. Kakashi said rather quickly. We are going to be working together, so we should get to know one another. I'll start. My name is Hada Kakashi, I have several likes and several dislikes, I have some hobbies, and my dreams are my own. Now you pinky. My name is Haruno Sakura, I like how she looks over at Sasuke, I dislike Naruto, her voice was venomous. My hobbies are watching Sasuke blush, my dream is she looked at Sasuke and blushed again. Everyone sweat dropped. Fangirls was thought of by three people at once. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, I like Raymon, people who treat me with respect and studying Kenjutsu from various sources, I dislike the time it takes Raymon to cook, and people who are cruel for no reason, my dreams are enough to make most people piss themselves, so I won't tell you about them to avoid the smell. I also don't like the smell of people pissing themselves. Naruto's words were calm and reasonably polite, though the mention of studying Kenjutsu as a hobby seemed to disturb both Kakashi and Sakura. The final part about dreams was said in such a way that the air seemed to grow much colder for a second. The way that he said it had Kakashi thinking that it just might be true. An interesting boy he thought. My name is Ichiha Sasuke. I like few things and I dislike my fangirls. At this point Sakura fell into a deep depression, I have no hobbies, and my only dreams are to rebuild my clan and kill a certain person. The last statement was cold, but somehow was overshadowed by Naruto's mystery dreams. Very well, we shall meet at training area 7 tomorrow, we'll see if you really are good enough to be Genin. Kakashi stated after a minute of silence. Wait, what do you mean we already passed the exam Sakura screamed. Naruto just sighed, she was such a pathetic loser. A genin exam means that you have mastered what it takes to be a genin, but to see if you will get to do actual missions, all the genin teams will have to pass a test with their jounin sensei. The copy name explained. Oh, and before I forget. Don't eat breakfast tomorrow, or you will throw up. Noted. was Naruto's response before he vanished with a puff of smoke. The Kashi's eyes popped open, a cage bunshin. He wasn't kidding about that kinjutsu thing. To think that he has already mastered the jounin level, technique. He said quietly to no one in particular. Sasuke's fists clenched tightly, to think that the loser knew an advanced jutsu that the Ichiha didn't was unthinkable. Sakura just looked confused, nah, Kakashi-sensei aren't you upset he didn't listen to your instruction she asked. That is what makes that technique so useful. Said the jonin, everything the shadow clone learns is transferred to the creator when it is dispelled. Sakura just stared dumbly at where the shadow clone was moments ago. The Kashi just vanished in a swirl of leaves, and Sasuke stalked off to the Ichiha compound, grumbling to himself. A few minutes later Kakashi was walking down the street, reading his book when Naruto walked up to him, I got the feeling you wanted to talk to me back there. You were right answered the copy nin. We can talk over Raymon. So Naruto, I see you have mastered the tree walking exercise stated Kakashi as they waited for their order to arrive. It's not hard said Naruto calmly. So, you have also mastered the cage bunshin no? Yeah, it took me a couple hours. 
Kakashi sweat dropped, this kid really is a monster. So Kakashi sensei, I heard from a reliable source that you were trained by me. Kakashi stared blankly. The yellow flash of dot. You are his son. Yes. What? When? How? Well, when a mommy loves a daddy started Naruto. Kakashi's face faltered. That's not what I meant. I don't know much, but he is my Itousen. He left me some scrolls with the old man, for when I reached Dot Naruto said his voice filled with sadness. I see he was a great man. That's what everyone says Dot Naruto sighed, but I'd like to know more about him, from someone who knew him personally. The Raymond arrived, one pork Raymond for Kakashi and three beef Raymond for Naruto. Thanks. Tuchi-san the boy said with a big grin. Naruto arrived at the training area nearly two hours late, only five minutes ahead of Kakashi. Both of their teammates stared at them. Wuyu, that was some breakfast Naruto said with a grin. Both teammates stared harder. You look a little winded Naruto. Kakashi commented. I just got back from my warm-up, 10 laps around Kanoha while carrying a large stump. A sweat dropped, not another one. The others just stared startled. Sakura just looked like he had grown two heads, while Sasuke was putting off enough killing intent to give a grown elephant a heart attack. Since when do you do that much training, dope he scowled. Since I was six was the relaxed answer. Now, we will have our test then said Kakashi, quickly trying to avoid a conflict. The rules are simple. Get a bell from me by noon, or else you fail and get sent back to the academy. Also if you fail you will be tied to a wooden post and made to watch while the rest of us eat lunch. The copy nin explained. And one more thing, you must come at me with the intent to kill or you will fail. If none of you can get the bells then you will all fail. Are you certain that you want that sensei? You might die was the calm, almost amused comment from Naruto. I assure you that won't happen he started to say, but stopped feeling a blade against the back of his neck and another against his side just below the ribs. The two Naruto clones stood calmly holding their kunai to his vitals. I see I may have to get serious after all he stated. Suddenly he was gone in a puff of smoke while a log appeared in his place. Then a trio of kunai came out of the nearest tree and hit all three Narutos. The two clones vanished in a puff of smoke while the real Naruto was suddenly replaced by a stump. The test starts now. Sasuke vanished into the trees. Sakura vanished into the bushes. Naruto appeared right in front of Kakashi, grinning. Naruto what are you doing? Giving you this. This is a pad of paper the copy nin stated. Yup, why did you give me a pad of paper? On cue they vanished, revealing the paper to be a Naruto cone, covered in exploding notes. Jikishu Kakashi swore. Then there was a massive explosion. Both clones vanished and right behind Sasuke, Naruto burst out laughing. Ah. What are you doing here dope? Kakashi is trying to trick us. What? Just follow me, we need to talk with Sakura. As much as I hate this, you and Sakura are my team. I have an obligation to share information, and as this is the only way we will pass, I need to talk to the entire team. Alright, my cage bunshin is guarding us, if Kakashi sensei tries to get to us he will have to alert one of my clones. Now we need to talk. We are a team, a three-person shinobi team. What are you talking about dope? This is a test of teamwork, we are supposed to work together to get the bells. The fact that there are only two is just to trick us into fighting one another. What are you talking about Baka? Kakashi sensei told us that anyone who doesn't get a bell will be sent back to the academy. Sakura said heatedly. Sakura, don't think of him as a teacher, right now he is an enemy, one who is level. If you were out in the field and an enemy told you that you have to get an object from him and that the one that gets the object will be spared but the others will be killed, what do you do? What if he is and you are a genin? Do you abandon your friends and teammates in order to get away or do you work together to try and work together to bring him down? But he's a teacher. No he isn't, he is an enemy who has stolen two vital documents that we were ordered to retrieve. Looks like you aren't as stupid as I thought Dobe. So what do you say, are we all in this together? Hi, hi, good, in that case. And it's um no jutsu Naruto yelled as he spun around and launched the glowing blue claw from his hand straight at a nearby tree. The technique hit and the tree started to collapse. Bakashi jumped out of the tree as fast as he could. Nice technique I don't recognize, where did you learn something so powerful? I learned it from one they all fear most. I see. Then you have met him. A long time ago. When I was six. Sasuke and Sakura stared at each other, both trying to figure out who they were talking about. So sensei, have we passed asked Sakura hopefully. Do you have the bells he answered. I do a Naruto clone jumped out of the wreckage of the fallen tree's branches. It held in its hands a pair of bells. Bakashi looked down at the bells at his side. Naruto if you have the bells then what are these? Bakashi just had time to note that his students were all grabbed by clones and pulled up into the canopy before he saw the bells turn into explosive notes. Uam, Sakura and Sasuke just stared as the area where Kakashi had been last seen exploded violently. They turned to Naruto with shocked looks on their faces. He said we should come at him with the intent to kill, didn't he was the innocent sounding answer. Naruto, 
The Jenin looked towards the origin of the enraged roar, then turned on their heel and ran like all itself was chasing them. Naruto sat in the Hokage's office, he had been sitting there for several hours, and it was boring. Naruto twitched. Boy, Hokage Clone Team 3 has finished pulling weeds. They dispelled. Oh, good work Naruto. How are the others? The paint job at the Nara household is done, we weren't spotted. Hmm, Shikaku-sen will be pleased to hear that. He hates housework. Oh and my team are just outside. Oh good, they finished. Dot stated the elderly Hokage. Team 7 reporting back from today's D rank mission. Dot said Kakashi as he walked through the door, accompanied by a very dirty pair of Genin. What happened to you two? asked Aruka, he was currently helping them to assign missions. Sakura was so fixated on Sasuke that she tripped and fell into the mud while planting seeds. Dot said Naruto with audible disapproval. Hey. And Sasuke got kicked by a cow. How did he manage that was the startled response from Aruka. He isn't very good with animals or people or anything that is alive for that matter. Shut up, done. At least I did the work. And I spent the day practicing ninjutsu while getting the work done many times more effectively and not getting my hands dirty. I'd call that a successful mission. Yes, results don't lie. Dot pointed out Aruka, while the Hokage looked amused. Speaking of results, Clone Team 4 is on the way back with the Daimyo's cat, and Team 1 has finished walking the dogs. Good work Naruto. Thanks, Surge I. The other shinobi in the room just stared at Naruto, as if he had just grown two more heads and a tail. He had just called the greatest ninja in the village old monkey. How is Team 5 doing said the old man unfazed. They have the package and they're on the way. Good. Damn it this is completely unfair. Why does he not have to do any work screamed a pink-haired Kinoichi. Actually, Naruto has been getting more missions done in one day than any other genin. His shadow clones can think on their own and transfer any of their experiences to him when they vanish. It's quite a clever idea for getting a large number of missions done quickly and still getting the benefits of training. Explained the Hokage. Bakashi sighed. Well it is true that he didn't personally accompany us, he did do the mission with us, whether you like to admit it or not. Sasuke sighed, I have no problem with that. These missions are annoying as well as pointless. Sakura just stared at him in surprise. The silence was broken by Naruto. Hokage-sama, do you know a small boy with spiky brown hair and a scarf? He claims to be your grandson. Hanohimaru? That's the one. He just attacked my clones. Oh, is that going to get in the way of your mission? Not really, I already finished cleaning everything, my clones were just checking for missed spots. That's good. Now Team 7, I have your next D-rank mission. They started. No, I refuse to do more of these stupid D-rank missions Sakura yelled. She is right. Naruto put in, they are quite boring. Aruka went into a loud and very long-winded discussion about mission ranks and why the new genin weren't ready for them. I am. Naruto quietly said while looking into space. No you aren't, you have been a genin for barely he was cut off. I do have something that I could give you. It's a C-rank mission, you are to guard a bridge builder named Tazuna to his home in waves and guard him until the bridge is complete said the elderly ninja. Hokage-sama. Quiet Aruka-san. They deserve a chance, and besides, Kakashi-san is with them. Don't worry I'll protect them. Very good, Tazuna-san please come in. In came a slightly overweight man with gray hair, he held a bottle of sake in his hand. These brats are the ones that are going to protect me. They look pathetic, especially the short one. He looks really stupid. The old man was cut off by a kunai held to his thought by an angry looking Naruto. It is unwise to insult those who are risking their lives to protect you, Tazuna Sandati said in a quiet venomous voice. Hey, you know you can't hurt me, you are being paid to protect me. I haven't agreed to the mission yet. The way that Naruto said this seemed to unnerve the old bridge builder. Kakashi couldn't blame him, that kid could be really scary. You talk big kid but, can you back it up? Why don't you ask Kakashi Sensei? Dot was the cold reply as Naruto put away his knife and walked back towards his team. The bridge builder looked at the team sensei. He was shooting just barely perceptible glances towards his student. Tazuna could tell that the kid wasn't just playing around, he was dangerous as an opponent and desirable as an ally. Well then, we will meet at the main gate at 8 in the morning. Just then another six Naruto walked into the office to nearly everyone's surprise. They were holding a fluffy cat carefully. As the onlookers watched, the cat sank its claws into the clone carrying it, which popped into smoke, while another clone caught it. We have the daimyo's cat dot stated one of the clones. The large woman walked into the room, oh, my schnookums, mummy missed you she cried as she grabbed the cat and started squeezing the life out of it. The clones all puffed out. There we go, that's the last of today's missions dot stated Naruto. Here is your pay dot Suratobi passed the envelopes to Naruto. Ergato. Naruto walked out of the room. I'll see you at 10, Kakashi Sensei Dadi called back. Sakura arrived at 8, Sasuke arrived at 8.30, and the client arrived at 9. At 10 Kakashi arrived. Where is Naruto-kun? Your late dot stated Naruto calmly, walking out from the forest outside the gate. 
But I was on my way here when a black cat crossed my path, so I had to go around. Liar cried Sakura. No, a black cat did cross his path. Naruto stated. It was a warning of things to come. Having said that, Naruto vanished and reappeared behind Kakashi Sensei. Baka no, idiot smash technique Naruto was suddenly holding a large tree branch. Next moment the branch was broken in two, and Kakashi was lying on the ground. With a lump on his head. Naruto-san, will you please teach me that technique Sakura asked with a thoughtful expression. Maybe later. Well cough I guess we should wheeze. said Kakashi as he climbed out of the pit, coughing up some sand to the horror of Tazuna. Which one of you is this again? He is. But I'm a Jinchiriki, so that makes me much stronger than a normal genin. You're a human sacrifice. How does that make you stronger? A.N. Please note that Jinchiriki can be literally translated as power of human sacrifice. No, but my abilities are the source of a double sacrifice. One is me and the other is another person. Huh? It's complicated and an S-class secret. So how do you know it though? The secret is about me, of course I know a secret concerning me. One thought went through the minds of two genin at the same time, is that why all the adults hate him. Naruto, this is not the right time to be talking about village secrets, even if you are exempt from the rule. Kakashi said, while simultaneously walking down the path and reading his orange book. Some time later the team passed by a puddle of water, Kakashi quickly looked at it as he passed. Hmm, it hasn't rained in days. Naruto just jumped in the puddle acting like a little kid, he was happy to hear a slight grunt of pain. Just as the group passed, the water turned into two ninja and masks wielding clawed gauntlets and a chain in between them. They jumped at Kakashi and apparently ripped him to shreds. Then turned their attention to the genin and Tazuna. I'll get you for jumping on me you stupid brat one of them yelled as he charged at Naruto. The other ran straight at Tazuna. Sasuke launched a kunai into the chain causing it to get stuck, but the two ninjas simply disconnected it and continued their attack. Naruto vanished. Suddenly there was a sickening sound of metal scraping on bone. The ninja that had attacked Naruto fell to the ground with a kunai sticking up to the handle into the base of his skull. Naruto stood on his body and started searching for it. He quickly grabbed a kunai from the ninja to replace the one he had used and proceeded to scrape the poison off of his claw and gather it in a small container. Seeing his brother fall the other ninja charged at his target as fast as possible, at least the mission would be finished. However Sasuke got in the way causing him to slow down for a moment to defend himself from the attack. His defense fell for a second, but that was enough, Kakashi burst from the bushes and knocked him out. You didn't have to kill Naruto, he could have given us information. Yes, but this way I can get the bounty on his head. The others just stared at how easily the innocent looking blonde had killed the man. What made the situation even more shocking was that he wasn't even disturbed by what he had done. Naruto continued to search for belongings, he soon pulled out some more poison and a scroll. Boy, sensei whoever said that dead men tell no, Tails Dottie said with a grin. The other ninja who had just woken up, stared for a moment, and then bit down on a hidden capsule in his mouth, he was dead in seconds. Who were they Sakura asked. The demon brothers, they were from the mist who were known for never slowing down in a fight, even when badly injured and always killing their target. Kakashi explained as Naruto created a pair of clones and sent them back with the bodies. Azuna-san, you have some explaining to do. Kakashi said, turning to the bridge builder, while Naruto started examining the different items he had taken from the two. Dot. Naruto grinned evilly, the information he had just been given matched what he had been told before he left. Flashback, Naruto, may I speak with you before you go? Dot the old Hokage asked quietly. Sure, what's that problem? It's not my idea, but the council has voted to give you some more interesting missions. So they want me to get stuck in too deep and get myself killed. Unfortunately that appears to be the case. It was to be expected, if I die on a mission they can both get rid of me and increase the pay that the village gets for the mission by saying it was more dangerous than what they were told. You seem to have a firm grasp on the concept. So what's the mission? There is a man in the wave country, his name is Gatto. Gatto is buying up all the export and import businesses in the wave. Our customers are a group of shipping companies who are being driven out of business by his unethical business practices. Your mission is to eliminate this man, should you choose to accept it. The last part was said with an emphasis to suggest he didn't think that Naruto should accept it. If I don't accept a mission it will just give the council more reason to prosecute me when exam time comes around. You think you will be nominated for the exams? If I know Kakashi Sensei, we will be. Also the council will want their precious Achiha to be in the exams as soon as possible, so they can show him off. I will accept the mission. Flashback, the Genin team was now in wave country, the sun was high, and a cool wind caressed their faces keeping them cool on this hot summer day. Just as the group was walking towards Tazuna's house, Naruto suddenly tossed a kunai into the bushes in front of them. Ah. Naruto watches where you throw those things. You could have hurt someone. Tsumimasen, Sakura-san I thought I saw something in the bushes. 
Congratulations Dobe. You caught the deadly killer rabbit. While Naruto made a big show of apologizing to the rabbit, Kakashi's brain was running over time. Something wasn't right. That rabbit has white fur, they only have white fur during the winter when days are short, and therefore it was raised indoors. Naruto doesn't behave like that ever, and since when does Naruto apologize to Sakura? If Naruto thought he saw something in the bushes, then he saw something in the bushes, and it wasn't a rabbit or shit, everyone down. The entire group ducked just as a massive sword flew over their heads and got lodged in a tree, just as the sword stopped moving a man appeared on the blade. Ah, Sharingan Kakashi, the famous copy ninja of Kanahagakure no Sato, what are the chances of meeting you here? Lamachi Zabuza, the demon of the bloody mist, a class nuke nin from Kurigakure no Sato, I should have expected as much. Everyone stand back, this one is out of your league. Well then, how about you hand over the bridge builder and in exchange I won't kill you. Omen, I can't allow that. Naruto calmly stepped forward to stand near Kakashi. Oh, how cute, the little genin thinks he can play with the big boys. Well your head sure is big. There was a moment of silence, a genin had just insulted the infamous abuser. He did it now Gaki. My name is not Gaki, it's Shinkiken no Naruto. A.N. Please note that technically Shinkiken no Naruto can be translated as ether. Naruto of the Crimson Flame or Maelstrom of Crimson Flames. Aren't you a little bit small for giving yourself fancy titles? No, my actual name is Naruto. And it's never too early to make a name for yourself. Brave words for a genin. I'm more than just a genin. With that Naruto slightly loosened his kadachi in its sheath. Naruto, I'll take care of this, you protect Azuna-san. Fine, but if you get in too deep, I don't have to follow your orders. Naruto whispered to Kakashi in a voice that was too quiet to be overheard. Tabuza couldn't hear what was said, but he could see by Kakashi's reaction that he had some respect for the kid. Could there really be more to this kid than meets the eye? He wondered. The battle began. Kakashi was trapped in a sphere of water, and there was a Zabuza clone standing between the genin and the lake, where their sensei was trapped. Take the bridge builder and run Kakashi yelled from his prison. Kakashi sensei Naruto started, do you remember what I said? Everyone's attention switched to Naruto for a second. I'd call this over your head dot with those words Naruto was gone. In the blink of an eye he had his sword drawn and he was behind the clone. Zabuza saw two things in that one moment, one Naruto's Kadachi had a bright red colored blade, and two he had sliced the water clone in half with one swing. This is no mere genin was all he had time to say before the boy vanished and reappeared directly behind him. This was a battle of swordsmanship like no other. Zabuza jumped out of the way of the attack, but had to release the water sphere to do it. Naruto's sword, while only two feet in length, was fast, and he had chakra running through it to make the blade longer. Zabuza was a better swordsman, he could tell that the boy had no proper training, yet he was forced to go on the defensive from the sheer ferocity and power of Naruto's attack. To the two genin and the bridge builder, their actions were just a blur, but to Kakashi's Sharingan, this was a deadly dance of steel. Naruto's strikes weren't graceful, they weren't precise, but they were fast and strong. Zabuza had at first hoped that he could wait for the boy to tire out, but he was surprised to see that his opponent appeared to have nearly endless stamina. Naruto swung high, Zabuza blocked, and with a fluid motion brought his sword into a middle height slash, but Naruto brought his sword to block at the last moment and proceeded to kick Zabuza in the face. Zabuza did a backflip and dived underwater, then used the suetan. Daibakufu no jutsu, great waterfall technique Naruto countered with, no, great fireball technique, normally a fire technique can counter a water element technique, but the sheer amount of chakra behind this one strike was enough to cancel attack. By the time the steam cleared, Naruto was nowhere to be seen. Zabuza just barely spun around in time to catch a bone-breaking strong punch on the flat of his sword. He quickly reversed the swing and gave his attacker a slash across the chest. Naruto skidded back and stopped on the water. He gathered his chakra and his blade and continued his attack with even greater ferocity. Zabuza was tiring, he could tell he had hit his opponent many times without being injured, but the exhaustion was beginning to get to him and his arms hurt from blocking his opponent's inhumanly strong attacks. Naruto focused as hard as he could on this fight, but his opponent was strong, he couldn't keep using its power all the time that would be a sign of weakness. He was already low level at fighting power, but his opponent was a former Anbu, he was getting tired, and his entire upper body was covered in minor scratches. Minor for him meaning they weren't quite reaching the bone. On the shore Kakashi stared in horror at his student's level of power, he could tell he wasn't even close to Zabuza's skill, but he was holding a stalemate with power and stamina alone. Minato-sensei, you would be proud Dadi muttered quietly. Naruto knew he was running out of time, sometime soon one of those attacks would be too serious to ignore. He made his decision. Naruto charged, Zabuza countered, the swords met with an explosion of sparks. Naruto's overhead chop was blocked but barely. Just then the Zabuza who had blocked turned into water, and another Zabuza came out of the mist and struck a lethal blow. 
Naruto started to fall from the blow across his back, from his left hip to his right shoulder. However, just as he fell, Naruto spun around and lashed out with his sword, the chakra blade had gone from light blue to angry crackling, crimson. Zabuza was just barely able to block, but the incredible power released when the blade destabilized threw him backwards towards the forest. He was sore, tired and nearly out of chakra, but he knew he had to finish this, just as he rose from the ground where he fell, he was struck with a massive wave. The blow was strong enough to shatter his collarbone and three ribs. Just as Kakashi was about to finish the downed Nukenin he was beaten to the pinch, three needles appeared in Zabuza's neck, and he went limp. Thank you for wearing him down for me. The masked hunter said calmly before disappearing into the mist. Bakashi had only one thing on his mind, he had seen Zabuza's last attack, and he could only think. I can't lose him too. As he ran to his fallen student. He need not have worried though, just as he got to the shore, he saw Naruto stumbling and leaning against a tree with his right hand, the sword was back in its sheath. He could hear Sakura gasp as Naruto ripped the nearly shredded shirt from his body. The marks from the many slashes on his body were already nearly gone, the cut on his chest was completely healed, leaving behind only a rapidly fading pink line. Damn that hurt, Naruto muttered just before collapsing from exhaustion and pain. Naruto awakened somewhat unpleasantly, there was a boy yelling wildly about how they were all going to die, and how Gato was unbeatable. Shut the hell up he yelled loudly as he got to his feet and noticed all the bandages covering his upper body. He ripped off the bandages and stretched. He then noticed the looks of shock visible on the faces of the people in the room. It was most likely dinner time judging from the dishes on the table. He calmly looked around for his pack and pulled out a fresh shirt with the sleeves ripped off. He pulled the shirt over his head as he walked towards the table. You guys look like you've seen a ghost. How the hell is that possible? Just yesterday you had tons of deep gashes and a deadly slash across your back. There is no way you should be fully healed so fast Sakura screeched in shock. If some tiny scratches like those were enough to knock me out for long, I would have died at the age of two dot was his answer. The group looked at him shocked until Kakashi sensei limped over to him and calmly explained. Naruto was never well liked in the village, he was quite poorly treated by the villagers and ninja like. I remember my mother telling me to stay away from him when we were little, but I don't remember him ever getting that badly hurt. Sakura argued. In the academy I was watched by Anbu to make certain that no one broke the fourth law and told me or any of my classmates the village secret. It's kind of funny because I figured out the secret at the age of five. I was kind of scared at first, but I later decided that there was no point crying about it and used it to become stronger. But secret? That is something that is illegal to tell anyone who doesn't already know, Sakura Sandot Kakashi interrupted. If it's some secret training method or technique, then it would make sense to teach us, since we are supposed to be a team. Sasuke observed. No, it is something much more secret, and it wouldn't be of any help in making you stronger, Kakashi answered. It is not something you can learn, it is simply a secret. Naruto said. But then how did it make you stronger? It didn't, but after I learned it, I was able to focus harder on my training, because I knew why the entire village wanted me dead. The entire village. Yes, well at least everyone over 15. That's ridiculous, why would some village secret make everyone hate you? Because they are fools, who blame me for the deaths of the 4th Hokage, and everyone else who died fighting the Kyubi no Kitsune. Through all this Inari just stood in silence and watched with wide eyes. How could that be, you weren't even born yet. Actually I was born 5 minutes before the fox was defeated. That's still no reason to hate you, so what aren't you telling us? Dope, demons can't be killed, and the nine tails was harder to kill than the rest, he had endless amounts of chakra, and his body healed even the worst blows in mere moments. As he said this Asuk's eyes grew wide, like the way you healed a lethal blow overnight. That is part of it, let's just say that the only way to stop the demon was to seal its power in a vessel. Naruto said quietly as he walked away. Naruto is not the demon if that is what you are thinking, though some of the villagers think he is. Kakashi sighed, we lost many of our best ninjas to the demon, and Naruto-san lost much more than any other, he lost his family, and any chance he had of getting acceptance. The assembled group looked in the direction of the front door where Naruto had left. Sasuke was furious, Kakashi had assigned a chakra control exercise which Sakura had performed on the first try, and Naruto had yet to return, almost five days since he had woken up. How was it that he, and Ichiha, and the top of his class was doing worse than anyone else on his team? As Kakashi watched his prized pupil fail miserably at this simple exercise, he thought back to Naruto, that boy had withstood more hardship than any human should, and it wasn't over yet. Just as he pondered the Naruto conundrum he heard a voice behind him. Was he really treated that badly? Inari, you should be at home, your mother will worry. If he is hated so much then why does he still bother living the boy continued as if the one-eyed hadn't spoken. Not a day goes by that I don't wonder about myself. Why should he bother, life is meaningless, in the end there are just two kinds of people in this world. 
the strong and the weak, so why bother living. He yelled, because I had no other choice. Said a voice from behind the boy, I tried to kill myself many times, but every time I would lose consciousness and whack you several hours later covered in my own blood, but completely healed. You seem to have stopped trying if you learned to fight so well. Yeah, I guess I realized, if I die then the sacrifice my father made would be meaningless, and to make things worse, I wouldn't be able to complete my dream. Naruto said with a sad smile, but worst of all, those worthless nonsenses in the council might actually be happy for a change, and can't allow that. The council consists primarily of fools. Yes, and luckily they are too cowardly to try and have me assassinated, or I might have to kill a bunch of valuable ninja. Sometimes you scare me. Bakashi sensei, I have a secondary mission here, so don't be too concerned if I leave in a couple days without telling you Naruto said thoughtfully. May I ask what it is? No, but let's just say that some shipping companies got together to get rid of a common foe. Oh? Before you go, are you going to train? What are we learning? Tree climbing. Done that. Oh, what about water walking? At the age of 8. I also mastered leaf cutting. That's nature manipulation. Yeah. Nature manipulation is Jonin level. So? You really are a monster. No, I'm its jailer. But those words Naruto walked away. Sasuke stared at Naruto retreating back from where he fell. He was certain he saw Naruto glance his way before walking straight up a tree and jumping off into the distance. Naruto was lying asleep under a tree, he had been running around for more than a day. Why were there no waterfalls in the country of waves? Aku crept closer and drew his kunai, this boy was strong, dangerous. He was ready to strike when the boy spoke, what do you want? You shouldn't be sleeping in the woods, bad people might find you. Haku quickly hid his weapon. What if I want them to find me? Why would you want that? So I can let off some frustration. Over what? I can't find a waterfall. Why do you need a waterfall? Training, uh oh. So, how is Abusa-san? What makes you think I know him? I recognized your scent, you were the one who saved him, and you smell of his blood. You have a strong sense of smell. Most demons do. Haku considered asking him what he meant, but he decided not to. Zabuza Sama is doing better, he will be strong enough to fight soon. Good, I want him to be in fighting condition. Aku was again tempted to ask what he meant, but changed his mind. Naruto opened his eyes and sat up. You look like a girl. I get that a lot. You look better than Sakura-san, that's disturbing. She wouldn't be happy to hear you say that. Good, you dislike her. She's a weak lazy fangirl who only became a ninja to be near Sasuke team, you really dislike him. There are no words to describe that pompous self-absorbed stooge. And your instructor? He is a man in a bad position, because of me he had to pass those pathetic wannabes, and now he has to do the nigh impossible task of making them into shinobi. You have no respect for your teammates, but you care about your instructor. He is like a brother to me, he is one of the only people I know who actually knew my father well. You never told me your name Naruto said, changing the subject. I'm Haku, who was your father. It's better to leave that unsaid, it is sufficient to say that he died soon after my birth, and I never got the chance to know him. Sometimes that is better Haku said sadly. Hmm, sometimes. I will see you Terry didn't catch your name. Uzumaki Naruto, it has been an interesting chat Haku-san. Until we meet again, Naruto-kun. Haku began to leave with his bag of healing herbs. Before you leave, remember, don't be too hasty when you come to fight Kakashi-sensei. Why? Circumstances might change, you never know. Haku was about to ask more, but he realized that the strange boy was gone. He's faster than me. Bakashi walked towards the bridge, he was upset, Zabuza might be up and ready to attack by now, and all he had to rely on was a useless fangirl and a broody egomaniac. Things weren't looking too good for old Tazuna's chances. Hey, where's Naruto sent Sakura's voice came from behind him. He had something more important to do. I hired all of you to protect me, how does he have something more important to do than his job? I don't know what it is, but he said that the Hokage asked him to do something while he was here that has higher priority than this mission. Higher priority than the livelihood of this country's people. Higher priority than a C-rank mission Kakashi corrected. Sasuke scowled, the dobe was getting solo missions. Zabuza frowned as he waited for the arrival of the bridge builder and his guards. What did the boy meant by what he told Haku, and for that matter why did he not attack Haku? He wasn't foolish enough to think that this genin hadn't been able to notice the presence of a weapon. So why? Zabuza sama, they're here. It could wait. Naruto was pissed, no, he was beyond pissed. He had arrived at his target's home to find him gone. He had taken all the thugs too, no one to take out his frustration on. So where was he? His office was in his house, and that was vacant. His bodyguards and thugs were gone. The day was most likely the day of the attack by Zabuza. The day was probably the day that Zabuza would try to kill the bridge builder. Oh, shit. Naruto ran, he ran, and he ran some more. Then he heard it, a scream, cut short by what was most likely a punch to the face. A woman's scream, a woman he knew. 
The Nari was freaking out, his mom was being dragged away by two thugs, one of them was about to kill him, and he left the oven on. The man holding Inari's mom fell down dead with a kunai in his spine. The man who was attacking Inari was grabbed by the back of his neck and thrown head first into a tree. Naruto retrieved his kunai. You killed them. I hope not, I need information from that one. You fought Gato's men and won. Yeah, so? You actually beat Gato's men. That's annoying, stop it. Naruto proceeded to question the captured man. This was a complex maneuver that involved a notebook, a pot of boiling water, 17 needles and a large fish. Inari wasn't sure where he got the fish. Alright, Gato-san is going to the bridge. What? My grandpa is there. And that's where I'm going. Naruto was gone, running on the water with inhuman speed. Naruto got to the bridge, it was misty, there were bodies everywhere, and he could smell his team and their opponents, he went towards Haku's fight. Haku was fighting Sasuke and Sakura, he was winning. Azuna was hiding behind some building supplies. Sasuke was covered with needles, Sakura was covered with needles. Sakura looked at Sasuke, it was her fault. He was trying to protect her and he got hurt. Sasuke's eyes had turned red, and there were two commas like marks in them. Naruto calmly walked into the ring of mirrors. Haku turned his head to look at the new arrival, there was blood on his clothes, and he was carrying something in a burlap sack. No matter, he was foolish enough to get caught in the Makam Haim SHM demonic ice mirrors. He noticed that the two genin he had been fighting had turned to look at Naruto. Naruto, where were you? You left your team to do all the work for you and left Izuna-sen unprotected, while well, we fought. Sakura cried. Where were you, can't you even walk down a road without getting lost in the woods? I had a minor chore to finish. Dot with these words he jumped to stand on Sasuke's shoulders while bringing his free hand across his body. And it's whom he cried as he swung his hand in a backhand slash action. Bloody red talons of chakra came from his hand, completely shattering the ice dome in front of him and leaving a huge opening. He then jumped back directly behind Sasuke and Sakura and kicked them both through the opening. Your attacks are very powerful, but you hit the wrong mirrors Haku stated, trying to keep the quiver out of his voice, not many people could shatter his mirrors that easily. Naruto turned to look straight at the real Haku, I wasn't aiming at you dot with a jump, he brought a fist forward and shattered both the mirror and Haku's mask. Haku noticed him sniffing slightly before attacking, he found me by smell. You don't need to keep fighting anymore. As long as Abusa-sama keeps fighting, so will I. No, that's not what I meant Naruto had no time to finish, as Haku jumped to stop the attack aimed at Zabuza. Oh, crap, not now. Just as the Chidori was about to make contact with Haku's chest, it stopped. Naruto had jumped in the way and grabbed Kakashi's wrist. Naruto, what are you doing Kakashi yelled in rage. One moment Kakashi-sensei, he turned to look at Zabuza and Haku. You two have no more reason to fight us. Sorry kid but our mission is to kill the old man, and yours is to protect him, we aren't stopping until our mission is done. You were hired by Gato-san. Yeah, why? Then your mission is done. Naruto said tossing the burlap sack to the demon of the bloody mist. Zabuza reached into the sack and pulled out head, a severed human head. A head wearing small sunglasses and sporting a fuzzy mustache. Gato-san, you've never looked better. The nuke nin said in a daze. Akashi's eyes grew to the size of dinner plates, Naruto-kun, you killed Gato. My employers are more wealthy than the people of the wave. They can afford an Aarank assassination. The Hokage actually gave you an Aarank mission, let alone an assassination. No, the council requested that I take this mission, they felt that I was the best man for the job. Oh, that explains why they gave you an Aarank mission. The rest of the people in the area just looked shocked, except Sasuke who was brooding about how the council trusted Naruto with an Aarank mission. I don't understand why would the council give an Aarank mission to a Genin Sakura said. They wouldn't, however the council doesn't like Naruto much, if they think that he will die during the mission, they would be more than willing to risk it. Kakashi answered. People just don't seem to understand us demons Naruto said sadly, turning to Zabuza. No, they don't, and apparently neither do I Zabuza answered, why didn't you let Kakashi-san kill us? Two reasons, one I have a business proposition for you, and two you owe me a new shirt to replace the one you ruined during our last fight. Mass Fasifault. The group was watching over the bridge, there had been some weak stomachs, when they had found the rest of Gatto's body. He had taken a group of thugs and come by boat to the unfinished part of the bridge, where he was planning to kill anybody left standing when the fight was over. They stood no chance, whatever Naruto had done sliced the entire group into small bloody chunks. Naruto was walking with Zabuza and Haku, I have a dream, I want to find those like myself, those who were prosecuted for something that was beyond their control, who were mistreated and hated, and I want to bring them together. I will create a place where we can live away from the prosecution that has followed us through our lives. He looked over to check if they were paying attention, they were. I know that I can't do this alone, so I have decided to form an organization, a group of powerful people who know what it means to be hated. I want you to become the first member of this group. And if we refuse Abusa was very straightforward about his concerns. 
always. If you refuse, I will let you leave. Should you wish to join in the future, you can try to find me. You have no problem working with known traitors. The Mizukage is a fool, I agree with your decision to try and overthrow him. Hmm, I see. Very well, do you want to join my organization under my command? I don't know what makes you think that you are strong enough to lead. You have fought me before. And I won. I am not so sure as abuse Osama, even after all those injuries he was able to keep moving, he was able to walk on water, and by the time I took you away from that place his injuries had already started to heal. Haku put in. I am not human, not fully at least, I am the Kaiubi Jinchuriki host to the King of Demons as well as his apprentice, after I reach, I am to be given access to scrolls left to me by my father, the Kanoha no Kiroi Senko. Naruto looked confidently at the infamous Nuke Nin. And I have both the ambition and the determination to accomplish my ambition. So what you are saying is that you have more power than you show. I already knew that however you are far from reaching that power. You fought me with your own power and lost. Maybe you could beat me with the fox's power, but that is not your own strength, it's borrowed. What do you want me to do to prove that I am good enough? The fight, until the winner is decided by an impartial judge. That is acceptable. Who? Hmm, Kakashi-san has sharp eyes, and he knows your power better than the others as well as my own. Very well, I'll get him, we will meet at the first location where we met. Through all this Haku stood quietly and watched. After Naruto left he turned to Zabuza, Zabuza-sama, why do you want to fight him again? We watched her last fight, he was holding back. Why do you think that? He used only, and considering his obvious lack of skill, he isn't a specialist. We want him to face you with his best style. I want to see what he is capable of. It didn't take long. Bakashi was called and he brought a small audience of those who overheard. Tazuna and his family were there, and Inari was still fuming that even after he rallied the villagers, they arrived too late to do anything. Sasuke was hoping to try and steal some of Naruto's, which in his mind were clearly the source of his strength. Sakura came because Sasuke was going. Finally the preparations were done. Naruto pulled Kakashi over for a moment, Sensei. Don't stop the fight if I look like I'm losing, not until I've done everything I can. Alright but don't get yourself killed. They walked to the starting positions. Hajim. Naruto didn't wait around after the start. He started hand signs, no. Zabuza dodged and used no. Naruto countered with Futen. To top a wind release. Great breakthrough. A great blast of wind blew away the mist, but Zabuza was gone, suddenly his sword came spinning from nowhere, and was stopped by a pair of shadow clones wielding Scarlet Kadachi. Zabuza came from above and landed with a foot on the clone's head. The clones vanished into smoke, and Zabuza retrieved his sword. Naruto grinned, and the sword was replaced by a Naruto clone completely wrapped in exploding notes. Zabuza turned into water. Naruto turned into smoke. A new pair of fighters jumped from the bushes on either side of the road and began to exchange blows at a rapid rate. Zabuza hit Naruto, who turned into smoke. Three more Narutos jumped from underground, one grabbing Zabuza's feet and yanking down Doten. Shinji Sanchu no Jutsu inner decapitation technique, while the other two readied swords to strike. Zabuza did a backflip at the last moment breaking out of the clone's grip and causing the other two clones to strike it instead. He then threw a pair of kunai into the clones, causing them to vanish into smoke. Another Naruto jumped from a tree with surprising speed and strength, Zabuza fought valiantly for several moments, before receiving a blow to the stomach with the kunai and falling into water, as this Naruto turned to smoke as well. The villagers sweat dropped as they realized that so far nobody actually came out of hiding. Naruto burst from behind a piece of cloth that concealed him against a tree directly beside the fight. Zabuza came out from the water in a flurry of movement, and they both clashed much faster than before. Their swords flashed as more clones joined the fray, working in perfect harmony of punches, kicks and sword slashes. Red claws appeared here and there as the nine Naruto's all attacked with everything they knew. Three Naruto's jumped back and fired no again, Zabuza shifted his focus to one of the Naruto's that had fired the fireballs, but was startled to feel a fist strike him in the stomach with enough force to send him backwards into a tree trunk. One of the burned Naruto's had been the real thing. Zabuza was startled, the boy had actually hit himself with a powerful fire just to land a hit. Nope, just as he thought this he heard the telltale hiss of an exploding tag behind him. The crowd had a great view of the great demon of the bloody mist, the big time air and criminal thrown through the air and into a large net which fell into a pit that had more exploding notes on the bottom. He then flew straight up as though out of a cannon and into the awaiting grasp of two more clones that grappled him so he couldn't move. Finally another clone came out of the forest and smashed a large newly cut club onto the lethal assassin's head. There were many sweat drops in the audience. How the hell did he rig up something that complicated without being seen was a cry heard from Sakura. A lot of cage and subtle things. Sasuke remarked dryly. Zabuza broke out of the grasp of the clones, only to find eight more Naruto's holding swords to his weak points. The first time we met you said there are eight weak points on the human body. 
You ask which one we wanted to be hit in, I decided to take things a little bit further. Well, I must say, that was the most complicated trap I have ever been caught in neutral, grounds. Zabuza said with a grin, his bandages had come undone, and his sharp pointy teeth were visible. Shaoshi Yuzumaki Naruto Kakashi said as if he wasn't expecting this outcome. Looks like you win kid, I'll join. Oh, good. Naruto said before his clones vanished into smoke and he collapsed from exhaustion. Sakura was angry, she was doing laundry. Sakura didn't have a problem with doing her laundry, but this wasn't her laundry. It was Naruto's laundry. Why was Haruno Sakura the official Naruto hater doing Naruto's laundry? Flashback, Sakura-san, I need you to do this laundry. Do it yourself, I'm not your maid. If you were my maid I would've fired you by now anyways. I'm not doing your laundry. It's not just my laundry, it's everyone's, and I have to go study with Zabuza-san and Haku-san. Sakura grew pale, she was very scared of the A-class criminal. And Naruto continued, he will be most annoyed if I'm late. So get your clones to do it. I have no intention of wasting valuable chakra on menial chores. Naruto stated, and you aren't doing anything anyways, so you have time. How do you know I don't have anything better to do she answered heatedly. You never train and you don't have any missions to do. How do you know Kakashi sensei doesn't have a job for me? Boy, Naruto-san, were you going to do the laundry Kakashi asked as he walked in. No, Sakura-san is doing it, since I have to go by train. Oh, good, Sakura-san I have another pair of pants that need to be washed. He said brightly, holding up a pair of pants that were quite thoroughly coated in with mud and dirt from the construction site. Sakura's eyes twitched. Flashback ends. Sakura sighed, to make matters even worse, Sasuke had decided to do his own laundry somewhere else, because he, according to Naruto, was afraid that she might steal one of his shirts to add to her creepy fangirl shrine. Sakura sighed, this was going to be a long, and smelly, day. Naruto jumped and did a quick strike with his sword. He repeated the maneuver against the training stump. Zabuza-san, are you certain this is the right style for me? I use a much shorter sword than you do. Nonsense, this style is good for any sword, it is simply a base, it will improve your basic control, and allow you to better use your sword, and will let you fight more effectively. During our first match you showed that your endurance and speed allowed you to keep up with me, however your form is weak, and you use more energy than what is necessary on every block and attack, you could be a much more efficient swordsman if you could only learn proper control. I appreciate what you are doing, Zabuza-san. So, I think after this is over I will teach you a new ninjutsu. The blonde announced. I am a jonin, do you really think that you know any ninjutsu that you do? Zabuza laughed. Do you know Cage Bushin? No. Zabuza paused. No, I don't. Exactly, my hobby is studying forbidden techniques. I also memorized most of Kanoha's forbidden scroll of secrets. Zabuza studied the boy in front of him. He was everything the man looked for in an ally. He was clever, resourceful, and he was strong, but most importantly, he had knowledge to share. The sharing of knowledge was the foundation of a strong alliance, sharing your skills had two main effects, one it made your allies stronger, and two it showed that you trust them. You know kid, I was doubtful at first, but this plan of yours to form a powerful organization may work after all. You know why I think the cage is the most valuable in my arsenal? Why the Nukenin asked. Because anything learned by a clone is passed to the user when the clone is dispelled the young Genin answered with a clever smile on his face. So, it would be good for testing your enemy's skills, and for espionage. Haku stated calmly. And if everything my clone learns is also something I learn, then Naruto stopped and performed a cage bunch and no, then I can train that much faster. Both of the Miss Nin stopped dead in their tracks. So with one clone you learn twice as fast, and with two clones three times as fast, and with 100 clones. Naruto said, placing his hands into the symbol, the forest was full of Naruto's. Zabuza looked at the boy with newfound respect, no wonder he was that strong at such a young age, he trained several times more than other ninja his age in the same amount of time. In fact, if he trained like this on a regular basis Zabuza estimated that he had at least several years' worth of experience. He would be a master swordsman in no time. With access to that kind of training, I could have easily succeeded in my coup. He mused. And you still could, the mist is corrupt, and the Mizukage has ruined the lives of thousands of people, just because of silly superstitions and greed. If you choose to strike at him, I will support your choice wholeheartedly. Naruto said evenly. Well, let's continue the training, I want to try out this training method. Naruto walked towards Konoha, as he arrived at the gates he looked over his shoulder at his teammates. They were trying their best to not look at the burlap sack he carried, the sack containing the rotting head of Gato. Name and business. The guard said without looking at Naruto's face. Uzumaki Naruto returning from a completed mission. Naruto said in a business like voice. Team 7 returning from a mission in Wave Country added Kakashi. Mamachi Zabuza and Haku here to see the Hokage finished Zabuza. 
Oh right wait a second, Zabuza the demon of the bloody mist. Yes, that's me dot I was told to show you this Zabuza held out a metal pendant hanging from a chain that he wore around his neck. Flashback, Zabuza san, Haku san, I need you to wear these amulets as a sign of your affiliation with my new group. Also, I will have the special eight ready once we arrive dot. I am a personal friend of the Sandame Hokage and the son of the Yandame, and as such, I have been able to convince Eritobi Oyaji to allow open trade and access to my organization. You will not be able to get access to village secrets or ninja-only stores, but any area that is accessible to foreign traders and visitors to the village is open to you. To say that Zabuza was impressed was like saying that Lee has thick eyebrows, a huge understatement. This kid had gotten him and wanted criminal access to the village as though he was a regular visitor. Before I forget, I can't get you two houses or apartments Beauty have set up a private home and training camp near the village. It's in one of the most dangerous parts of the forest, but it's great for survival training and you don't even need a guard dog to scare off intruders because they usually can't even get to the front door, which is also hidden. Zabuza snorted, I like your style, kid. You've said that before. And it's still true. Zabuza examined the amulet he was given, it was made of the same metal as a kunai and had the shape of a fang. There was a kanji on one side, dragon's teeth. Dragon's teeth. It's from an old legend, a great adventurer and sea captain found some dragon's teeth. Then when he faced a great force of enemies that he couldn't beat, he sowed the teeth like seeds, and after he was done they each transformed into an immortal warrior of great strength and killed his enemies. So we are named after these immortal warriors of legend, I like it. If we continue our new style of training then we may actually become worthy of this name. Haku observed, both he and Zabuza could currently create and train with close to 20 clones, and their power was growing at an impressive rate. Flashback ends. The guard looked confused then memory kicked in, and he quickly checked his notices for the day, there it was, the Hokage would like to see you immediately, Zabuza san. As the demon of the hidden mist village left, the guard started after him and the Konoha ninja as they left. Wow, to think that the Hokage is meeting with someone like that. Another week passed and Naruto was gone. He had not shown up for training, and the team had searched for him all day, until the Hokage told them that he had sent Naruto on another solo mission. Sasuke was fuming, Naruto got serious missions, and he got weed pulling and cat jazzing. Also he never really realized how hard it was to catch the cat without Naruto's shadow clones. Sakura was muddy, scratched and exhausted. She had been doing a lot of work ever since Naruto started getting these solo missions. He was getting a new solo mission almost every day, he would return, join the team for a day, and then vanish again. Akashi was irritated, not only were these solo missions ruining his teamwork lessons, but he was worried about losing another teammate. He had lost to Yandane, and now he was afraid that he would lose to Naruto. Naruto was in a ratty, moldy, dirty, and very shabby village. Why was he here? He was here because of his own big mouth. Flashback, I'm sorry, but we can't send our ninja on a dangerous mission such as this without proper payment. The Hokage told the group of shabby farmers from the far corner of the fire country. But, my lord Hokage, we are only poor farmers, we can't turn away these bandits without help. Please we have tried to find samurai to protect us, and we have found some, but they aren't enough. We can't turn away these bandits from killing us all and taking the rest of our food and positions. They have already taken our horses, livestock, our rice and even my wife the youngest of the farmers exclaimed. And? Yes this is the plot for the Seven Samurai by Akira Kurosawa, I'll do it. The people in the room stared at Naruto, Naruto, you realize that you will not get paid for this. One of the more short-sighted ninja present said in a sarcastic voice, I was unaware that you were willing to offer charity, or are you doing this because you are in the mood to kill something? There are many reasons for me to help these villagers, they have seen many hardships, and they have been given nothing but ridicule in return, they are desperate, and they are in need of help. Naruto grinned evilly all of a sudden, also, you say that there is no chance to receive fame, but there is no fame like that spread by a terrified foe. The villagers started in surprise, a single boy. That is all we can get. It would be better if he didn't come, this way at least we will not be responsible for his death. One said in a quiet voice filled with despair. Don't underestimate Naruto, he is easily one of our village's most talented shinobi. The elderly Hokage said with distinct pride. The farmers looked at Naruto with surprise. This boy was one of the most talented shinobi in one of the most powerful shinobi villages in the world. The village of Kanahagakur has only sent us one of their ninja, but their leader has said that he is one of the most promising and skilled young men in his village. One of the villagers announced loudly to the assembled villagers and the small group of samurai present. One of the old men looked nervous when the term young man was said. Naruto, who was concealing himself with a smirk, probably worried that some handsome fellow would steal his daughter, he thought. One of the villagers looked around and asked, so where is he? He was right here a moment ago. The spokesman who had led the group that brought Naruto to the town said, I swear he was right there he shrieked in terror. And he is one of the samurai said. 
He was a pleasant looking man who looked like someone's favorite uncle. The farmers cast him a curious look until one of the other samurai who looked younger than the others said, what does Gorbei san? He is standing right there against the wall Katsushiro kun, Gorbei pointed. You are very observant, samurai san said Naruto coming out from behind the sheet that covered him, he had specifically made the pattern just slightly different from the rest of the wall. You don't get to have my kind of experience without learning to spot a concealed ninja. I am Yuzumaki Naruto, also called Shinkiken no Naruto. I have little interest in the running of the village. I came here to remove your bandit problems. If you insist on paying me, you can find some way of remembering my name. I may travel often in the future, so it is always nice to have a place to stop for the night out of the rain. Naruto said clearly in a confident voice. What makes you think you can get rid of 40 or more bandits another samurai said, he appeared to have a recently shaved head, and his bearing showed him to be the strategist of the group. You are merely a genin according to your clothing, no matter how talented you are for your age, surely you wouldn't be so foolish as to think that you can handle 40 bandits alone. I hate overconfidence, I would not be caught dead thinking that I am the best in the world, or that I am undefeatable because of who my parents were, or how well I did in the academy. Naruto began, in fact I was bottom of my class in the academy, and I never met either of my parents, however I happen to be one of the only people in the world who have mastered the cage bunch and no dot. Are you aware of what that is? I have heard of many different bunshin, most of which create a duplicate of the ninja and are used to distract, some are even solid enough to fight. The bald samurai answered. That is correct, however the thing that makes the cage bunshin a forbidden technique considered only usable by and above he paused to let them digest that fact, is the fact that it creates perfect copies of the user, without requiring any special materials, and the copies don't only look like me, they think and react like me, they are fully solid, and each is just as strong as the original. He paused again watching as most of the villagers looked at him in a combination of awe and terror, the reason I am considered a master of this technique is because I can make over 100 such clones. So I see that you are not just another Genin, and you suggest simply creating an army bigger than the bandit's own, and attacking them until they run away. No Naruto grinned, those who attack the weak are the worst kind of scum, almost as bad as those who betray their comrades. They must be eradicated. You believe you can do this? I feel that a demonstration is in order, it would be difficult to explain my abilities in combat simply by talking. Very well, a battle, luckily there are many sticks to use as swords. No, true skill only shows when you use real weapons. Are you certain? I am, they stood 20 paces apart, the battle would be between Naruto and the one called Kaiuzo, it was decided that he was the best swordsman, and would most likely be able to avoid making a fatal strike, Naruto agreed, because this way he could show what he was capable of. Begin, Kaiuzo set his sword into a ready position, and Naruto drew his kadachi. Naruto saw that his opponent was waiting for him to make the first move, so he did. Naruto focused and a blade of chakra grew, lengthening the Kadachi's blade to the length of a full katana, to the amazement of the observers. He charged quickly but not at full speed, as expected his opponent was ready, and countered with a swift downward chop. He rolled to the side coming up at his opponent's flank and struck again, again he was blocked. Naruto grinned, this guy was at least as good as Abusa. The battle was quite even, both were holding back, but it was clear that the samurai was stronger and more skilled than Naruto, and the only thing Naruto had over him was his speed and endurance. This man was a true master of the sword. After several minutes they stopped, both breathing heavily and sweating from the intense workout. You are much better than Zabuza-san, his speed and skill is impressive, while yours is the stuff of legends Kaiuzo-san. I have heard of the dangerous assassin Mamachi Zabuza, he is well feared. I am surprised that you know him. He has shifted his allegiances recently to aid me in accomplishing common goals. He taught me Kenjutsu, and I still train with him and Haku-san regularly to improve my skill. Well, I must say you may be one of the best swordsmen among our group, it would be an honor to include you in our battle plans. We may even be able to avoid unnecessary deaths on our side. The bald leader started with a warm grandfatherly smile. The plan was ready and the field was set. The people were nervous and near panic. Then it happened. Three bandits were spotted near the town, three horses not far away. The bandits were according to plan, supposed to see the fence, but not the defenders. This failed miserably. One samurai, one who was not notified and was unprepared, was seen by the scouts, Kikichio. The chase was on, the bandits were cornered and killed near the horses, and one was captured. Now it was Naruto's turn to shine. The mission was simple, sneak into the bandit camp and kill as many as you can. Not a problem. Naruto arrived at the camp on foot, he jumped through the trees as quickly as the horses ran and arrived at the destination actually ahead of the three samurai and their guide, they didn't have enough horses to bring more. As the group prepared to strike, they were distracted from their plans by a gurgling scream of terror. Naruto four minds thought as they realized the blonde was gone. As the four arrived the sight that met their eyes wasn't for the faint of heart. 
Bodies littered the ground, the buildings were aflame, and the horses trampled those who tried to ride them. In the center of this, Naruto stood surrounded by a scarlet shield of flame. He stepped forward and swung his hand as claws made from the same red flame-like energy came from his fingers and sliced two more bandits as their end. Then he was gone, a gunman just fired a shot as his target vanished, he was sliced cleanly in half by the blonde boy's Kadachi. His attacks always struck and each hit was lethal, this was the power of a demon not of a man, and yet it was a man who wielded it. The battle was swift if you could call it a battle, the bandits were killed with the exception of five. When asked why he did this Naruto simply said that those who survived would tell exaggerated stories and his fame would spread, famous ninja got paid more for missions. Also the stories would scare other bandits away from this area. This mission was done, and he had gained not only fame and a safe place to stay the night, but also the respect and friendship of seven comrades in arms. This is a waste of my abilities. Ah uh, no, at least it won't take long. The girl's voice was little more than a whisper. Every cloud has a silver lining. How very true said a voice from the trees, as three forms jumped down onto the road to surround the genin. Naruto sighed, and now he had to fight nitwits. Flashback, Naruto-kun, Hinata-san, I am sending you on a D-rank mission to bring medicine to an old lady who lives just outside of the village. The Hokage said. Hinata turned red and nearly fainted. Then flashback, at least I guess this can count as training. Naruto said in a bored tone. Hand over the girl and we won't hurt you. Naruto looked over at Hinata. She looked scared. So, you aren't after the medicine. No, Sai, so I guess I can't change the level of this mission to a C rank, just get out of the way. Make me. The enemy ninja looked at the infuriating boy with twitching eyes. Naruto kun, they're clouds, you should go back to the village. If I did that, it would count as betraying a comrade, those who betray their comrades are worse than trash. He said calmly. An admirable motto, kid, but you're out of your league. How about I make a counter offer? He said, as though he didn't hear the ninja talk. You withdraw, and I won't go out of my way to kill you. You really are stupid, Gaki. No, just bored. At least you have some dignity. Dot with that said he attacked. Naruto sighed and then vanished from sight. The attacking ninja just fell, a bright red bladed sword sticking out from between his eyes. The other male was struck with an uppercut to the jaw that threw him into the air. As he flew up the young, blonde genin appeared above him, he had no time to defend, as the boy performed a series of hand signs and smashed his hands into the man, then quickly disappeared and reappeared on the ground. As Hinata and the third watched, the man was spun around by the winds to face directly downwards and began spinning rapidly while upside down. Finally the poor man was launched directly downwards at incredible speeds to smash face first into the ground. Hinata looked at Naruto in awe, he was incredible. He's good for a genin, the last cloud nine thought. She readjusted her belt and turned to look straight at him. Damn she thought, the boy is impressive, I really wish I didn't have to kill him. She frowned, I don't want to do anything for that nonsense, the rakage, but I have no choice. I have nowhere else to go. She didn't want to fool herself, no one else would accept her, she was a monster, but at least someone had some use for her. Naruto frowned, she was just his own age, or not much older, how could she be? There were two answers. She had special powers, or she was very talented. Even after these conclusions Naruto felt his eyes go wide as small wisps of violet flames began to swirl around the cloud nin. Hit, those are the flames of Nibi no Nekamata the fox practically shouted as he forcefully pulled Naruto's consciousness to his cage, she's the Jinchuriki of the two-tailed cat. I noticed, how do I beat her, she wants a fight. Summon my chakra, she fights with fire, you will need my regenerative power. Right, can your chakra barrier protect me from her attacks? Doubtful, better rely on healing. Naruto woke up, only a second had happened, and his opponent was waiting to see his first move. He frowned, he needed to subdue her without killing, no assassination techniques. The two Jinchuriki circled each other. Each waiting for an opening, Naruto obliged. Quickly shifting, he intentionally allowed his body to become slightly off balance. Quick as a cat, the girl struck, flames burst from her hands and completely covered Naruto. As the flames receded she was shocked to see that he wasn't there. Where was that boy? Just as she turned to examine the area behind her, he struck. As soon as the flames had hit him, Naruto had quickly focused all the demon chakra he could into healing the burns, as he set around himself to hide. He had counted that she would think that he dodged and would not check for him, it was a gamble, and he had hit the jackpot. She knew what happened, he had tricked her, but surely now he would be injured and unable to fight at his best. She had never fought Uzumaki Naruto. The punch caught her in the side, just under the ribs, and launched her into a roll. She recovered quickly and countered with a lethal blast of fire. Naruto was again engulfed in flames. Hinata was horrified, the man she loved was being roasted alive by some strange fire, and she could do nothing because she was too weak. But surprisingly hope was not lost, Naruto burst from the flames and launched three kunai at the cloud girl. 
As the mysterious girl dodged the attack she saw something that made her nearly piss her pants. The young man who she fought had looked straight at her with red hateful eyes, eyes filled with the promise of a painful death. There weren't many things that scared the young Jinchuriki, but those eyes looked more terrifying at that moment than the demon trapped inside of her, the demon if released was terrifying, but those eyes were the stuff of nightmares. Naruto reined in his power quickly to avoid letting her know what he was, it would only cause her to fight harder if she knew that her opponent was a Jinchuriki. The fire came again in greater intensity, she was beginning to try harder. He knew that he had to stop this attack, even with the Kyubi's power he would be crippled by a direct hit. He had only one way to block it and it would take a lot of chakra. He had no choice. His only way to escape the attack was the act Taifu no dot. As the fire struck there was a strange shrieking sound like nails on a chalkboard combined with a strange hum, and the fire was thrown away from the target surrounding it completely, but not hitting the boy in the middle. As the fire settled, she was happy she hadn't attempted a tojutsu attack under the cover of the flame. The ground around Naruto's feet was covered in deep slash marks in a spiraling pattern centered on Naruto, and a tree that had been too close had been sliced into salad. He stood there and his eyes were blood red, his slit pupils looking straight into her soul. I recognize those eyes. Kayubi no Kitsune cried Nibi in her cage getting her host's attention. You're like me she said in shock. Now don't go telling everyone, you'll scare off all the prey Dottie answered with a cocky grin. I underestimated you, no more, now I'm serious. As she said this the flame began to swirl around her body and formed two long tails of violet fire. Beside, this had just gotten harder. As she dived forward using her speed and strength to deliver a close-range attack, he also released his power, or a portion of it at least. The flaming tails were extinguished as the intense blast of pure chakra hit her, and she was nearly knocked to the ground, there in front of her stood her opponent, his body covered in a layer of red chakra, the chakra swirled like fire and obscured his body completely, as one single tail of chakra formed behind him, the chakra tail whipped around and knocked her to the ground. She tried to stand but she wasn't fast enough. His fist connected with her jaw and sent her flying into the air, and then he formed one seal with his hands. Cage Bunshin no, she was shocked, his power was incredible. However, she reminded herself, she was no pushover either. As his clones charged, she fell into a tojutsu stance and began to fend off their attacks. As the clones diminished she launched a wave of fire away from her body that dispelled the remaining clones. She re-examined the field, her opponent was gone, but where? The ground beneath her feet trembled and he burst out of the ground to strike her in the jaw once more. The battle continued. Punch, block, kick, dodge, uppercut, parry, and counter-attack, dodge. The combatants were getting tired, the cloud nin was low on chakra, and Naruto was losing his patience. Finally something snapped. After another dodge Naruto back flipped away and launched an ninjutsu. Futen. Tatapano, quickly reacting, his opponent dodged and launched two jets of purple fire from her hands. Naruto rolled between the jets and jumped straight up into the air, just as he was above his target, there was a blast of smoke, and a solid ring of Naruto surrounded the girl, each drew a single shuriken, and launched them shouting shuriken, cage bunch and no at the top of their lungs. The girl's eyes turned as big as dinner plates as shuriken blotted out the sun, oh shit. She tried to run out of the way, but he was ready, just as she moved three more of his clones, suddenly wrapped their arms around her, and all covered her just as the shuriken hit. The real Naruto grabbed Hinata and pulled her out of the way, just as the area was lit up by a massive explosion. He rose and dusted himself off, Bakuretsu cage bushin no jutsu. He heard clapping, Naruto turned to look at the elderly Hokage and his Anbu guards, about time you got here old man. I had to fight my way through most of my bodyguards to get here, they really didn't want me to get near this fight understandable. During the fight a small crowd of shinobi had gathered, drawn by the high chakra levels like moths to a flame. Naruto walked across the field of battle, he was tired, but the adrenaline pumping through his veins was keeping him going. As he passed his beaten opponent he heard her voice. Who are you? Shinkiken no Naruto, and you? Naijito, you aren't going to finish me off. I still have use for you. With these words he walked on stopping by the corpse of one of the fallen, he gripped the handle of his kadachi and yanked it out of the man's skull. As he cleaned and sheathed his sword he turned to the Hokage, when she is healed enough to talk, send Konohamaru-kun to get me, he will know where to go. She is an enemy who attacked you and your team. She is a weapon who has a foolish wielder. But that he began to leave. Naruto-kun, where are you going? Asked a dazed looking Aruka. Anata-san and I need to deliver medicine to a client. The ninja stared at him like he was mad, he had just killed two and disabled a highly powerful enemy combatant, and he was more concerned about a D-rank mission. Naruto-kun, you really shouldn't have tried to walk all the way to the old woman's house after a fight like that. It was my job. You fought two and a Jinchuriki, but you didn't even go to see a medic nin. Relax, knowing the medics, they would probably kill me and say it was a wound from my battle. 
The Hokage sighed, Naruto had walked straight to the old woman's house and given her the medicine right before collapsing into a dead faint. Iruka had tried to carry him back, but found that he was wearing over 300 pounds of weight on his body the entire time. You should have removed your weights. I didn't have time. Are you certain you want to try and draft her into your group? She tried to kill you. If I killed everyone who tried to kill me, half of this village would be dead. The elderly man froze and looked at Naruto, I'm honestly surprised that you haven't yet. What do you mean? In your position many would have gone mad. Who says I haven't? The kindly old man looked down at his successor's son, a psychopath wouldn't have the clear head necessary to come up with all those traps and combat strategies. They say that there is a fine line between genius and insanity, but what they don't tell you is that it doesn't matter what side you are trying to cross from. Sandane looked over at the boy, you may be right. Anohimaru was tired, no he was beyond tired, Naruto Niasen had given him an assignment for training, and it was hard, very hard. He sighed and got back to work, trying to master the difficulty on the scroll in front of him. At least it was paying off, he and his team had quickly gotten better at concealing themselves, Naruto refused to associate with ninja who used pathetic disguises, and they were the three best students in their class. Naruto had started teaching them chakra control and several that would make them better prepared than most of their classmates. They could already do all academy levels and were starting on some more difficult ones. But why did this so-called Gakaku not have to be so hard? Yujito woke up to the smell she knew reasonably well, she had spent a lot of time in the hospital when she was younger, when you are being trained to be the ultimate warrior from early childhood, you tend to get hurt a lot, unless you have superhuman regenerative powers. The guards were new, but the bed was comfortable with weight guards. She tried to sit up, then stopped and decided to never try that again, her entire body was one giant injury. Then it all came back, the mission, the deaths of her team, good riddance to bad rubbish, and him. The boy, Kyubi's container, had beaten her into a pulp, and she could feel every bit of that now. Oh, you're awake. I trust you remember what happened. There was an old man sitting next to her. Where am I? In Kanoha's hospital, you have some major injuries. Who are you? I am Sandame Hokage. The man said and then laughed at her expression, it resembled a fish. The what do I owe the honor, watching to make certain I don't escape before you have me interrogated? I can't do that. Oh, and I thought the Hokage was supposed to be the head of the village, but you say that you don't have that authority. I am in charge of all village matters, but you are not a prisoner of my village. Then whose prisoner am I? Naruto's, he has a small group he has formed which I have an arrangement with. You are their prisoner currently, but as they have no medical facilities to look after your wounds, they ask that you be placed here until you are healed. So I am the prisoner of some superpowered genin. Actually there are very few of them currently, and all of them are higher rank than genin, with the exception of Naruto. Speaking of which, I should go and contact him to tell him you woke up. And then. The old man wasn't paying attention anymore as he left with his guards, all that was left of the ninja who had been guarding her was one team of genin. Ah, you are awake. Hi. How do you feel? Like I was caught in a massive explosion. Oh, how long was I unconscious? One week. Oh, so did you come to interrogate me and learn my village's secrets? Nope. Then why are you here? Well I'm glad you finally asked. I am as you know a Jinchuriki, as such I was greatly hated by the villagers who only saw me as a monster, even though I wasn't even aware of a dot. I have felt the pain of being alone, and I have decided that I will make certain that I am never alone again and do the same for as many others as possible, to make this dream a reality I have chosen to create an organization. So far there are only three of us at this point Zabuza and Haku walked in, these are my associates, Mamachi Zabuza and Anakuri no Haku. We are still gathering members, as three people is hardly enough to make our dreams come true. She looked at him, then at the two men behind him, Zabuza as in Kurigakur no Kijin. That Mamachi Zabuza. Hi, I'm sorry I have never heard of you she said, turning towards Haku. I try not to let myself be known most of the time, I am Zabuza Sama's partner at assassination, and I was at one point a Kurigakur hunter. Oh, I can tell that you don't like your current position as a member of Kumagakur. The genin who were on duty had been listening the entire time and showed some surprise at this. How do you know that, Naruto sent she asked in a mocking tone. When we fraud I noticed that while your abilities would allow you to have a good defense, you always left yourself open to attacks while focusing purely on attacks, even after you realized that I was a Jinchuriki you didn't increase your defenses, instead they actually deteriorated and you went out of your way to intimidate me, even though you knew it would only make me fight harder. Oh and what does this tell you? But you were hoping that I'd kill you. The entire group in the area suddenly shouted what? Naruto continued, you hate your current home, the only reason you haven't abandoned it yet is because you think that you have nowhere else to go. She looked at him in surprise. I understand how you feel, it's the same reason I didn't leave when I was 6, though at the time I blamed it on the fact that some villagers broke my legs with a fruit, Cart Dottie said as though reminiscing about his first day at the academy. And you didn't kill them? 
I didn't even find out about my abilities until after it happened, and I didn't learn to use them for another couple months. Really? I've been able to control fire since I was a baby. Your powers are more obvious than mine Dottie said, my abilities are very subtle, mostly just an increase in my already present abilities. That thing you did during our fight to block my flames was pretty noticeable I think. That was not my power, it was a dot. Really? That's pretty impressive. Anyways, before we get too far off topic, I captured you for one reason, I want to invite you to join my organization. But she sat up so fast she nearly flew out of bed, she realized too late with the expiation of the many bandages covering her body. Debuza's eyes grew wide, and Haku pinched his nose, while his face grew very red, Naruto meanwhile fell backwards onto his rear end in shock. Of the three genin who were guarding her, one who was dressed in a green spandex suit, got a nosebleed while shouting something about the power of youth and beautiful flowers, and his teammate who had long black hair and wide eyes, suddenly developed a nosebleed so bad that he fell over backwards. Their female teammate just yelled at them and hung her head in shame at her teammate's behavior. Yujito quickly yanked the covers up to cover her body and looked at Naruto, want me to join your group? Do you actually want me? Hi, Yujito-chan it would be an honor to have you in my little organization. Yujito's eyes misted up as she looked at this strange boy who was grinning happily at her. 